Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Adam here with Retro Repairs, and today I've found myself a sort of uncommon find that I'm gonna clean up and um, get ready to go here. So, what we've got here is a Panasonic 3DO controller, two of them actually. Um, I found these at a pawn shop. They were listed for $10 each. I had no idea if they work. I don't even have a 3DO right now that I can test them on, but for $10 each, I mean, that's a pretty great bargain, um, especially considering these are fairly expensive if you want to try and buy them online. Um, go ahead, check out YouTube, uh, pause the video, see the prices, and uh, you can see for yourself what they cost. So, now that you've unpaused it and you uh, kind of know what we're dealing with here, if I can get these cleaned up, um, get them ready for resale, um, I can easily probably clear another 50 bucks on um, these all together. So I guess the uh, first things first we will get started opening them up So to open these guys up, it's pretty straightforward um, They have a little crosshead or Phillips screws. You just need a screwdriver and Unscrew them like you would anything else. No special screwdrivers or security screws needed on this um, Your screwdriver just has to be small enough that it can get into some of these deeper holes like that, but other than that nothing special um, what I do want to see, though, is how does this sticker come off? Sometimes they leave a lot of gunk. Yeah, and this one's leaving some residue. So we're going to need to clean the sticker residue off this as well as part of this video. But just to open up the screw holes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get these screws undone, and uh, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, screws are removed. So to open it up, um, looks like it's easiest to flip it over and lift the top off. I think. Yep. Just like that. So then we have the underside. So nothing too special on here. These uh, bumpers come off. Make sure that you don't lose these metal pins. They hold the bumpers into place. So I'm just going to take those out of each of them and set them aside so that they don't get lost. But um, let's kind of take a peek and see what we've got in here. So just like any other controller, you have your rubber pads. These pads, they uh, seem to be in good shape. Sometimes they get broken. Um, there's actual tears in the rubber, but these look to be okay, just a little dirty. Same with the uh, start and select buttons, or in this case, they are P and X buttons. Um, so again, again, pretty standard between various consoles. Get your pads, got your buttons, put everything aside here. These are going to get all cleaned up nicely so that uh, this looks good. Now, this is where it gets a little different from what we might be used to. Um, got There we go. We lift it off the back here, and there's a lot more on the back side here. So there's a volume control knob here. There's a spot for headphones, I think. And there's a port. And you might be asking, why is there a port on this controller? Well, um, the Panasonic 3DO doesn't have two controller ports on the actual console itself. The way that it works is, if you want to play with a friend, you get another controller, and you plug it in to your friend's controller. So, you have daisy chain controllers together. Kind of a silly concept, because... If you're winning in something, all your friends got to do is unplug you, and then you can't control your character. But uh, it is what it is, I guess. So we're going to get this board cleaned up a little bit just to make sure that all of these contacts are, uh, are working great. The capacitors here, they seem to be in pretty good shape. I don't see any leakage. Um, the board itself is clean. I don't see any corrosion. Um, I really have no reason to believe this wouldn't work. So... We're just going to give it a light cleanup, and the casing is what I'm most concerned about. I just want to really clear that up, make it look a lot nicer, and um, just more appealing to play with. So um, what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to fill up the sink full of hot water with soap, let it soak for a while, scrub it up so that it looks nice. I'm not going to show you this process again. I've done it in probably five, six, eight other videos. Um, I'm pretty sure at this point you know how to fill up a sink with water and soak some plastic parts. So um, once that's all dry, I'll be back and we will uh, begin reassembly. All right, so while the casing and buttons and everything is soaking in the hot water and soap, I'm going to show you a couple quick things that I'm going to do to this. So firstly, first thing I noticed with the board is 
it looks like the cord is detachable. Um, so right here, the cord actually can plug into this receiver and that means it can come off as well. So to take it off, you just have to carefully kind of get your fingernails under the edges here and pop it down. Kind of work it side to side so that you're not damaging anything. And there we go. So that comes right off. So now we can have the board just sitting there by itself. The cord itself, um, I mean, it looks to be in good shape. I'm not, I might give it a quick little wipe down, but otherwise I'm not too worried about having to do anything to this. So what we're going to focus on right now instead is just cleaning the contacts on this board. They're in pretty good shape, so I don't really... I'm not concerned about it not working, but I just want to make sure that there's no um, built-up residue, dust, tarnish, um, oxidation, or anything on these. So what you need, a couple Q-tips, a bottle of 99% isopropyl alcohol. You can pick that up from a drugstore. If you can't get 99, 70 is okay, 99 is just better. Um, it just has less water content in it, so it, will, uh, it won't leave any residue, that type of thing. So... In order to clean these, all I'm going to do is um, just rub it over these black contacts here with the wet end and dry it with the dry end. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to do that for each of these contacts. You might notice it's taking a little bit of darkness away. Some of that's oxidization. Some of that might be a bit of the finish on these contacts. Um, I'm not worried about scrubbing them perfectly clean. We don't want to remove too much of this finish as it's probably there to prevent oxidization in the first place from occurring too much, but we're just gonna give these a gentle wipe down just to make sure that when we put it all back together, it's gonna be working as well as possible. So I'm gonna do that to both of these boards as I've also taken apart the second controller as well, and they're identical. So the same boards for both controllers. They're both in pretty good shape. This one here, Actually, I don't know if you can pick it up, but you can see a little more wear on those contacts, especially right in the middle here of those start and select buttons. And we compare it to this one where it's not as pronounced. So I'm going to give this guy here a little bit more thorough scrubbing. But again, nothing crazy. We don't want to scrape the finish off. We just want to try and remove any type of built up residue or oxidization. So I'm going to do that and um, hopefully by the time I'm done here, I can dry off the controller parts and begin reassembly. And one last preventative thing I'm going to do before I begin reassembly is take my toothbrush, load it up with some isopropyl alcohol, and just clean out this uh, expansion port just to try and get dust and other stuff out of there. Um, just to make sure that whenever someone goes to use it and plug in, there's a clean connection at all times. You can also use contact cleaner, which works very well for this. It comes in a... Uh, in an aerosol can, you just spray it in there, let it air dry, and it uh, does a great job of dissolving dust, grime, um, tarnish, oxidization, whatever would be on there. So, do that to one of them, do that to the second one, and I'm going to go check on those component or the uh, buttons and casing right now, dry them off, and I will uh, begin reassembly. Okay, so we have all the parts, and they've all been dried off, and now it's time to start reassembly. Um, so, personally, I've never done a 3DO controller before, but they're all fairly standard between different types, whether it's a Sega or a Nintendo or anything. Typically, I find it's easiest to start with the buttons in the front of the shell. So, that's the shell all cleaned up. Um, you know, there's a little bit of button wear or uh, label wear on those buttons, but otherwise it cleaned up pretty nicely. Actually, there's one spot I want to get back in there with the toothbrush afterwards. But, um, cleaned up pretty well and just time to start reassembly now. So on these buttons, they all have little knobs that come off or notches or whatever you want to call it. And they have to line up with a notch that's in the shell. That prevents you from putting the button in sideways or upside down or anything like that. So if a button doesn't fit, just try it in a different spot. So the button with the little divot in the middle is the B button and that always goes in the middle. Um, the other two buttons, I think, are identical. So the, you know, those notches line up perfectly there. So it doesn't really matter which direction you put them in. Just line the notches up with the casing. And as long as it fits, 
it's good to go. So next will be the start and select button. Again, this doesn't have any particular orientation. Upside down doesn't really make a difference. So that's in place. Um, now we need the rest of the rubber pads. So this is gonna be the D-pad. They have to face with these little black spots, they gotta face up. That means that these, where it kind of comes out a bit, that's gonna face down on the button. And there's this post right here, which it sits on so that it uh, can be held in place, I think. Maybe not. No, it goes on this round one right here. Um, kind of right there. So that hole goes right around that post and that just holds it in place so that it doesn't shift during reassembly. Um, otherwise, now we have these two smaller pads which go right in there, I believe. Um, yep, just like that. And now we're ready for the board. So before you get too far, actually I think we need these shoulder buttons. So again, remember there are these little metal posts that go into the shoulder buttons, one for each of them. And I'm not sure if there's a particular direction these need to be. There's no printing on them, like it doesn't say L or R. They look pretty interchangeable and identical. So I'm just gonna try put it into place in one spot. If it doesn't fit, we'll try it on the other side. But that appears to be all right. And let's try the same with this one. Also appears to be good. So time for the board. So before you get too far, you gotta plug the cable back in. If you don't plug the board cable in, it's never gonna work and you're gonna have it halfway reassembled and then realize, oh crap, there's a cable that still needs to be plugged in. So um, you have to plug it in the proper way, which I was not doing. Plugging it in, there we go, and just push it so that it's it snaps into place just like so. And then I believe the cord is gonna just run through this little gap here. So what we do now, arrange the controller so that the cord will be able to sit in this little channel right here. Um, yeah, just kind of pushes into place. And then the board lines up and these posts, these plastic posts right there, go right through the board to hold it into place. Make sure that the controller pads for the shoulders sit into place as well. Um, just make sure they're not loose and floating around. They don't clip in or anything like that. They just sit nicely. Um, this cable here, make sure that it's down below, um, not falling over the side. Otherwise, you're going to have difficulty plugging everything back in together. Um, now, take the back. It should just drop flush into place. There we go. Perfect. Um, Grab your screwdriver, start screwing in these screws. There's six of them, it appears, and I'll be back once that's in. So I screwed it all together, but I also screwed something up. Um, see these buttons? They're not coming out. That's because I forgot to put this pad into place. So don't make the same mistake I just made. Make sure you put this in. I had that sitting aside with the other controller. So I'm gonna take it all apart and put it back together now. Okay, so let's try that again. Um, taking your capacitive pads for these, you have to line it up on top of the A, B, and C buttons. Now, we grab the board, put the board into place. It should sit nicely. Route the controller cable through the channel up at the top. Just like so. Dip it down there around that post. And now we should be ready for the uh, back of the controller. So should just go nicely into place just like so. Something's not quite right here. This board wasn't sitting nicely. There we go. So now we flip it over, give each button a press just to make sure that it feels right. Feels good to me, so we're gonna screw it back together and uh, go on to the next one. All right, so both of them have been screwed back together and they're good to go. So that's how they look now. They've been nicely cleaned up, um, gotten rid of a lot of the gunk that often builds up in the crack here between the two sides of the shell, as well as around the D-pad and around the buttons. It's a common place for general grime and stuff to build up. Um, both of the expansion ports have been 
just touched up with a toothbrush and alcohol so that when you plug your other controller in, you get a strong connection. Um, one last thing I want to mention about this, <clears throat> you might notice that the tip of the controller is very, very similar to the Sega Genesis and or Atari. And it is, it's the exact same end, but they are not compatible. Um, I've never tested it myself, but I've heard when I looked it up to see if I could use a Sega controller on a 3DO, they say, don't, you can destroy it. I don't know if they're talking about the 3DO or the controller or what the deal is with that, but just don't try and plug in a Sega Genesis controller into the 3DO or the other way around. Don't plug a 3DO into the Genesis port. Um, apparently bad things can happen, but that's about all I have to say on these. So those are all ready to go. Um, I wish I had an opportunity to test them, but I'm fairly confident they'll work well. And in a case like this, since they are untested, um, if they had a 3DO, I'd gladly let them try it out before someone were to buy it off me. But because uh, it would generally be a local sale. Um, but either way, good to go, and I was glad I was able to find these and an opportunity to show you how to open up and how to clean out a 3DO controller. Um, if you like the video, please be sure to like it below. If you like um, all of my videos, subscribe to my channel, and as I upload new ones, um, you'll be the first to know. I haven't had a whole lot up lately, been busy during the summer, but now that it's starting to cool off, I'm hoping to get back into uh, cleaning up and refurbishing systems and consoles, that type of thing. So, um, uh, thanks a lot for watching and it was great having you here and we'll see you next video.